Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show, and I hope you're all doing well wherever you are, enjoying today and every day of the week and your family and everything else under the sun. It's so good to see you all here, and we always enjoy our shows and bring just interesting um, conversations, ideas, tools, techniques, strategies, everything that we can possibly think of that will help free us up from wherever, from whatever we are involved with. And, you know, it's just our little way of doing a little something on this planet. So before we get started with our show, I want to say hello to Amnon. Hello. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? I'm good. And you? Fine. How was your weekend? Uh, weekend was great. Mine was so busy. <laughs> I had a... a, a you a, launched... Huh? Did you launch... I a... launched... Well, let me start with... Friday, my four-year-old grandson graduated from preschool. Aww. Yeah, he's going to kindergarten. <laughs> and then uh, Saturday night, he was in a dance recital, and he was in three dances, and he's got real curly hair, and he was adorable. And then um, yesterday was my book launch for the millennial book, which I'll tell you all about later. But yeah, we had a big panel of millennials, and it was at one point... Um, the gentleman who was helping me do some promotion turned around and said, Marilyn, they're so good, you don't even have to be up there. And I said, well, that's the perfect thing, is that you pick a really good panel, and there's a really great discussion that they're generating and your audience is generating, and you don't have to do anything but leave. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So it was a lot of fun. And also, I'm wearing a special T-shirt today because a group of um, people here in Raleigh, North Carolina, have volunteered to create a project, and it's called the Sidewalk Listening Project. Sidewalk Listening. And we, once a month, go somewhere in Raleigh, carry, and we go on the street, and we just listen. And here is, I just wanted to show you. Mm -hmm. I am here to, I am here to hear you. And that is our shirt. And, it's, and soon we will have a website up and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're in the area and this is of interest to you and you want to be a volunteer, you want to listen and just be, let me know. You can write to Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. We're looking forward to the next Saturday, which is going to be on the 29th of June, uh, going to an assisted living. And that should be really, really cool. So just reach out to me if you want to know more about this project. So on with our show. So today we have a very dear friend of mine who I love having on. She's creative. She's spunky. She has wonderful things always going on. She's creating opportunities wherever she goes. Elizabeth Galecki is this extraordinary uh, photographer and she's just wonderful. Look at her. Aww. Say hi, say hi <laughs> to you. Elizabeth, everybody. <laughs> I love being here, even if I'm shaking in my shoes. <laughs> so we were just talking about that because the last time Elizabeth was on, there was a snowstorm. Yep. And my husband and I went to pick her up to bring her to the show when she was actually like almost praying. We couldn't yeah, get that there, right? That would slide down the driveway and get stuck. And she wouldn't have to come. And then yeah. today she says yes, but she <laughs> is nervous about being here, but she's brilliant. And so. Well, thank you. But she's doing it anyway, which is, you know, that's something for us all to reflect on because you're, you're nervous being here today. Wished it would snow in June. <laughs> and I was nervous yesterday yeah. doing my book launch. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you do something, right? Sometimes it gets easier. But if I find like, you know, one-on-one -on -one with no cameras, I can talk to anyone. But have put a camera in front of my face instead of me being behind it, I get super nervous. So <laughs> I don't, it's, well, it's, and it, for me, it's not just, it's not the camera. It's not the microphone. It's sometimes it's just something. But once you get into the groove. Right. You just take it on and you feel the energy of people around and you go for it. Yeah, right? I love that. We love it. And so we love you being here. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I love here, being here. Really. And, and we feel your energy. I mean, I feel your energy out there every time I'm here. Aw, thank you. you. Know? Wow. And so it's great. And I feel your energy and I feel your participation and the fact that you're here and it's all good. So remember, anytime during the show, you are welcome to call in to 919-518-9773 anytime you want. If you have a question, a comment, whatever. And also you can come in on Skype and that is computers. That's plural. Then the number 2K voice, you will come in on Skype voice. And you can do that again anytime you want. You can come into our chat and ask questions, comment, whatever you like there as well. So just put your name under our video, under us, and you <laughs> will come in there and we will see you and we will 
love to engage and ask, you know, see what you're up to. So, Elizabeth. Yes. <laughs> has a, is it, to talk a little bit about your photography first. Sure. Um, I have had a photography business for over 20 years in Raleigh. I went to school for photography and even back in school, I had two different loves. One love being people and families and children and documenting them in their real life. And then this kind of quieter side of landscape. I always call them vignettes, like very like small little vignettes of landscapes, not wide open, but just little pieces of nature. Um, and so I've been doing a little bit of both. And a couple of years ago, I started a project called Eyes Wide Open, which was the last time I was on the show, yeah. which was really fun. And um, it's about noticing what's in your daily life every day. And I would fo I photograph it, whether it's fog or snow or rain, kind of how the different environments and weather change your environment. So you might see it on a sunny day and it looks the same every day, but then it rains and there's these beautiful droplets and the light coming from underneath or to the side. So I've been working on that project and then um, just kind of lots of different things have been opening up through that. So, so you know, Eyes Wide Open was a phenomenal uh, project and just a, a representation of what is possible for us in our daily lives and being mindful of the small things mm -hmm. that are around us or big things, but everything is small and big at the same time. So right. who can, you know, you can't, uh, you can't measure it. But to be aware of just the detail around you and the colors and just the the relationships that you have with individuals and all of these things, you know, your eyes are a lens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it was fun because I went on a walk with a friend this morning and she, we walked and she stopped and she looked down and I didn't see it, but she saw the smallest tiny snail that I'd, I mean, it was just, I don't even know how she saw it, but she was obviously paying more attention than me. And she took a photograph of it and she's going to paint it. She's a painter. Uh, so uh, yeah. So it was well, just like, and then it opened yeah. my eyes to the beauty and the little, you know, circular shell of this beautiful snail that I would have never, ever seen, you know? Well, it takes, sometimes it takes us all. Yes. To, um, to see things and to talk about that's mm -hmm. maybe why one of the reasons we do the show is so that, you know, all of us can come together mm -hmm. and share what we're seeing, what we're feeling, which, what we're noticing, what we're hearing around us so that, you know, we can, um, you know, living um, yeah. life with the senses. I think that is like one of my friends said that to me, like experiencing life with all the senses and it just, you know, seeing it, feeling it, hearing it, you know, all the different things. And I think it's so important. And, and just as you said, sharing it and allowing people to see more and feel more is pretty cool. It is because then you realize how big everything is around you and, you know, what part you play. Mm -hmm. And how connected we all are to each other. And I think, and for me, listening is the, the sense of all senses because everything, all the senses around us are telling us something, mm -hmm. are sharing information with us. And so our, my job, our job, I feel, is to tune in to what and I that think is. The more we tune in, the more we feel. Absolutely. And I think that's so important. And that's, you know, when we can share that with each other versus just going through life and not feeling, just is this kind of like, you, sometimes you get in this zone and you just don't even, you know, hear, see, feel anything. But I think the more that we pay attention to things, we feel it, we share it, and we can share Absolutely. those experiences. And it's fun. <laughs> it it's is fun. fun. So you have started a new, I mean, a new project, mm -hmm. right? What I thought was fascinating. So would you tell everybody what that is? And sure. remember something. So Elizabeth is doing this here, but what she is talking about is a global endeavor a global experience you know it's from home to home where wherever you are so what are you doing yeah so I kind of merged two of my biggest passions I my growing up my grandmother um, lived on a farm my grandparents did and she used to cook on this big beautiful cast iron wood burning stove and I just always remember the smells and the tastes and things that she would make in that kitchen and I never really had an opportunity to learn to cook. I just kind of figured it out on my own. I experimented when I was a kid, made cakes and learned to make bread. Um, and then photography became my career. But all of a sudden, I was sitting in this um, art gallery, Rebus Gallery in downtown Raleigh, and she had asked me to do a photography workshop a couple summers ago. 
And I noticed that she had a kitchen in the back. And I asked her if there's any way that I could merge, you know, doing cooking and photography. And that just kind of blew up. Like, a, it like blew up into this idea of farm to table. I mean, I am vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for 30 years. And I really love local. And I love meeting farmers and, and just the whole experience of it. So going to farms and photographing what they see and picking on their own and seeing where food comes from and learning about the process and really creating art from these beautiful vegetables that we eat every day and then cooking with them and creating really, you know, wonderful recipes that are not just a grilled cheese with a tomato that so many kids, you know, they, people try to simplify it and, you know, oh, you know, kids can only make quesadillas or grilled cheese or pancakes, but there's so many things kids can try. And the more they try and when they, when they use the ingredients that they're picking and photographing, they experiment and it's such a fun project. So we started this whole thing called Click and Cook. So it's farm to table vegetarian cooking and photography. And they photograph the whole process from the farm to the table and then they blog about it. And so it's this just beautiful combination of writing and documenting and cooking and we really focus on unusual recipes like you know something just hit me when you said that and i'm i'm thinking when you take the picture mm -hmm. it's almost like you're giving birth mm -hmm. to this fruit mm -hmm. or this vegetable mm -hmm. you're like giving birth to it so you're beginning the process yep. of this relationship with this vegetable. Right. And that is, it's a relationship. The whole, like, you know, when you really think about cooking and eating it's cool, and it's just like building this relationship with this, you know, thing that becomes part of you. It's, you know, building your system, your immune system and your body. And so starting with the, and so we're going to talk about the kids too, because the, the kids, they're, um, awesome. <laughs> they're awesome. And they, I mean, they really are fantastic. I mean, I have a couple myself, but so when you're t photographing, mm -hmm. Describe that process. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Because anybody, I mean, you may take a picture or you may take a, a picture through your through your eyes. Mm -hmm. what do you, what's the process of looking at these fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. to kind of take it in and connect with it, I guess is what I'm asking. So I first look for um, light in the way light hits things. So I take the kids out a lot of times and, you know, tell them not to take pictures right away, just to experience the way it looks um, and try to show them. I mean, so many times you just think of taking a picture from the front, you know, just you don't even think like, oh my gosh, what does it look like if I get under the plant and the sun is coming through the leaves and you can see all the veins of the leaves. And so I really try to get them to see differently and to, you know, we try to get out at times of day where the light is different too. It's, you know, really early in the morning or late afternoon. So it's not just overhead sun, but overhead sun can be really nice as well. Mm -hmm. So really paying attention to the different way the sun hits things and also paying attention to like, if it has rained the night before, like how beautiful those mm -hmm. big, droplets are on the leaves or on the vegetables and how to smell yes enter into the the picture <laughs> yeah so you know just experiencing the smell of the soil and being out there I mean it really does when you're out on a farm there's so many different smells whether it's the smell of like a fruit coming off a tree or that's just the soil because you're walking on it and you know oops my uh my wish is coming true. We had a little flash of light. <laughs> the power is good. And it was an oops. <laughs> I can't help reality. You can't help live either. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, how you're describing this is really fabulous. How, so I, maybe before we get into act, that detail, how mm -hmm. does clicking um, manifest itself in creating this relationship? I mean, with, with the end result, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, what right. is so fabulous about the end result of what you're left with in the recipe? You know, considering the steps. We're going to go into the steps, but sure. I think I want to know about the end result. Like, what does it do to all of that? Uh, I think, you know, documenting something from, you know, just looking at a tomato to what it becomes in the end. It's telling its story. You know, it's like what you do. It's, you know, but in photographs. Um, so you have this beautiful tomato and sometimes they do still life. Sometimes they, you know, photograph it on the vine um, and creating, you know, just this beautiful thing from something organic. And then 
And then maybe showing it cut apart into pieces and the seeds on top of a cutting board that's got that texture. So it's got these dimensions. And then, you know, the end product of this beautiful plated dinner that they created. And I think it, it it's art. It's, um, it has a lot of different dimensions. It's, you and what know, about the flavor? How does it oh, affect the flavor? I mean, I think anything that you start from that you've seen and you've picked and you've created something out of it, it just boosts that flavor. And mm. I think that kids really enjoy that process. Um, and I think they're way more willing to try something they've never tried before when they've created it. Like they may, I have I had a little girl who did not like eggs and we went and picked the eggs from my friend Helen's garden or her chickens. And then she, we made soufflés, which, you know, people don't think kids can make a souffle. They're so fun and they're fluffy and they're not just like scrambled eggs on a plate. They're these beautiful creations. And then she, I remember what she wrote about it. Cause I just read it the other day. She's like, it's like eating puffy bread, you know, it's not like an egg. And she's like, it was so good. And just to like give these kids something that they, you know, people don't think that they would experience or they're too young to experience. They, it gives them that kind of, um, that excitement about food. And I have that. I've always had that excitement. So I love sharing that excitement with kids. Well, I have, the way they you know, my daughter, I was telling Elizabeth, um, my daughter uh, is moving and moved into my little townhouse with my husband, with her husband and two babies for two weeks. And I have had the pleasure of watching my four-year-old and he is amazing eating and all these things and just observing how he he loves like flavors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing to me. He loves it. Yeah. And they love to like really get their hands in it. I think that's so important, that texture. You know, we do use a lot of eggs and letting the kids like for souffle, you have to separate the eggs and letting them do it in their hands so that they are feeling that yolk and the, you know, the texture of the, mm -hmm. the egg through their hands. And when they're sifting flour, like feeling, so I use this organic local flour from Lindley Mills in um, North Carolina. And just letting them touch that flour that feels so different from just a regular it flour. Does, it has, oh my gosh, it feels it's so light and it, airy uh, and just soft. I never, I'm oh not, my gosh, I never just focus on touching flour. Yeah, and you let flour. them, and that's part of the whole experience is letting uh -huh. them feel it and touch it and experience like how different things feel. Uh -huh. And looking at like the tomatoes that come out of the garden that are fresh versus like the one that came from California that you know, is perfect and whatever. Like they're, they're not perfect. They're beautiful. They're dark red, you know, just showing them the, how, I mean, the vegetables have more nutrients, the more intense they are. And so when they're fresh and they're heirloom and they're grown locally, there's just so many benefits to it. So mm -hmm. it's fun to kind of let them see that and teach them about that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm because I'm visualizing a tomato, but I'm also <laughs> thinking about this, the, the process. So we, so they're clicking. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going, they're mm -hmm. observing, they're taking it in, they're choosing. They're tasting, like they're we'll tasting. go to the farmer's market and they'll taste things and we'll go through the whole farmer's market. We try to go to different ones, not just like, there's so many small ones now that are a little bit even more. We're really trying to focus on like no pesticides and that kind of thing. And there's more and more doing that now, but they'll mm -hmm. let you taste it. And so you know, especially at the big farmer's market, they'll go to three different places and try the different things and decide which ones they like the best, like the peaches, which peaches. And were the do, best. You th do you believe that the actual shot reflects the choice? Of oh, what yeah. They and how? I mean, I just think, you know, the passion that they have by, you know, picking uh -huh. things and, and thinking about. And how about, they lay it out. Right. How they, oh, my gosh. How uh -huh. they lay it out. I mean, watching them put together a little still life of the things that we brought back from the farmer's market and we'll do it out in natural light or we'll put it on a farmer's table or we'll, um, you know, do it in a bowl where they, you know, have, and it's just, it's so much fun. And they like get up on chairs and they do it from above or they do it from below and they really experiment with it. So ultimately, I mean, is it practical to think we're going to, that people will do this every time they want to buy food or go or, or create recipes or, you know, eat, are they going to, I mean, is it, do you do this? Yeah. <laughs> With your food normally? A little bit. I mean, I tend to, I don't photograph it a whole lot. Like but I, I mean, the, even just the enjoyment, yes. just the, 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 well, you do that. Yeah. I love, I mean, I've loved food and I do like, I literally just, you know, I, I relish in, you know, what I eat. Do and you eat slow? 
Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Is that part of the process? It is. And I it think is. appreciating all the different things that you make and um, and just, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just. I mean, because you know, these are, I mean, this is a, this is a unbelievable thing to talk about because we don't normally talk about things like this. Right. And we don't usually break them down. Right to this degree and I am really breaking it down. Mm -hmm. It is fascinating. And I, I, you know, I, I, you know, it's not just for kids. No. And that's the fun part. Like I have had a lot of adults that are like, I want to do the, you know, photography and cooking together because it is, it could be for anyone. And just, Mm -hmm. um, so many people I think get in a rut and kids too, like you eat the same thing every day. And I think what I want to do is really show people that there's so many options. Like, I don't even like to cook the same thing twice. Cause there's like, you look on the internet or you, we, you know, we just did a little dinner party. We plant one of my students and I, we planned a dinner party for her family. And that was one of our workshops. And we went to the library and we got a 10 cookbooks and we just put together a menu from the library and just looking through the photographs and trying to figure out, you know, what's local. How long did season. it take? Um, we did a, it was a three day workshop. So we did like the first day was, you know, going and getting the books and just spreading. We sat outside and just spread them all out and tried to decide what we felt like, you know, would go together. And then. So how do you incorporate that into your every day? Um, for me personally. Or anybody. Um, I think just, again, it's kind of like the eyes wide open, slowing down and thinking and trying instead of, um, you know, and going to the grocery store a lot and just kind of seeing what's fresh or the mm-hmm. farmer's market. I think going to the farmer's market is the biggest one is, mm-hmm. you know, see what's local and see what's there and and then create something with it versus the other right. way around. Like, I think right. a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to do chicken tonight. And then, you know, maybe mm-hmm. they don't get any further than that. Like we always do chicken and broccoli or whatever. But I think like there's so many vegetables, like pick something new and figure out what's, you know, even just what one you can little, do with even it. just one thing. Yeah. Just experiment. And then the thing is making mistakes. Like it's okay to make mistakes. Like let's say it doesn't work. So you try something else. And I think that's another thing. People are busy and they're afraid to spend time because they just think it's going to take too long, but there's really, it doesn't have to take long. Like I have, I yeah. think what I have, one of my favorite cooks book, cookbooks is fresh food fast and it's all vegetarian within like 20 minutes and it's all really really good mm-hmm. you know it's fun because i'm sitting here and i'm thinking uh, you know when i went to the farmer's market last year the year before whatever i would look and i would see these gorgeous like um cauliflowers mm-hmm. or broccolis mm-hmm. that were funky colors yes like right? the, yeah yellow the ones yellow and, ones mm-hmm. and the ones that had funny shapes yeah. i just wanted to plop them on my table exactly it was so beautiful yeah and I guess it's fun to taste them and see if they're different. Oh, yeah. Right? It doesn't have to be the whole meal. Right. Just, it could Even be do just, a tomato yeah. tasting, you know, like pick out four different tomatoes because they have, I mean, the, there's tomatoes that taste, you know, smoky. There's tomatoes that are more juicy. There's tomatoes that are just more watermelony, you know, like they're just, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to be like, let's go have lunch after this. <laughs> what does this do for you in your life? That's the point. So. It's like, you know, we, we talk, we've talked about so many things on this show. And this is just another avenue to experience life. Yeah. That and anybody can and, do. Yeah. And it's just, it's about appreciating and just thinking about it versus it becoming kind of robotic. You know, yeah. I think is what it is. It's like, think about it. it. I mean, it doesn't have to be every day, but even if once a week, you just kind of appreciate it a little slower mm-hmm. and you think about it a little bit more and and bring your family into it. Like, I think that's a, I mean, kids love to cook. And I think so many parents are like, oh, you're mm-hmm. going to mess up the kitchen or that's going to be too complicated. But that's what I them, was told. Yeah, me too. And it's so, it's like, who cares? So just clean it up. Like no big deal. Or make mm-hmm. them clean it up. Like, you know, like just let them experiment and just have fun and, you know, help them with the stove or whatever. But like, you know, and I have, there's so many kids with allergies now. So this little girl that I work with a lot has, she's gluten-free and she is pretty much vegan. She does, well, she does eat some meat, but um, no cow dairy or anything. So that's been really fun for me is teaching her how to make really creative, amazing food gluten-free. We made pasta, we made from scratch, you know, and that's like the whole process of making pasta. Everyone's so intimidated. It's not hard, you know. That's and- what you say. <laughs> But I, I mean, I boil pasta that's gluten free, and you know what happens when you make a mistake? Yeah, and it is gummy. It's it's glunks. I mean, it just clumps together. So I mean, make it from scratch. I mean, I can't even make it in a pot. (laughs) (laughs) It's because you know it's like 
Al Dante is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I have a young woman that I know, and some of you might know my friend Debbie who passed away, but her daughter-in-law, uh, uh, Rebecca, is a therapist, and she has combined cooking and and her therapy practice because she has couples coming in and they're cooking oh, together. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I do think it's like there's the collaborative nature of people cooking together mm. is really fun. I mean, it just takes, it yeah. also takes the pressure off of having to do the thing from start to finish. You know, if you have people, someone cutting up, someone yeah. cleaning up after you messed up that cutting board and, you know, having music on and just celebrating it is, it's, it's a fun thing to do with friends, with your well, what do people? What What do you say to people who say, "I work all the time. I have no time." I mean, this. Well, you have to like want to to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't. If it's not your interest, you're not going to do it. But I think that if you love food and you one, you want to either save money and not be eating out all the time, eat healthier, eat organic, and you know, and you support can do local. that look cheaper. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it's can you you can do it cheaper. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it takes a little more time, but it's, you know, it's mm. a little bit of thought process. But you can, I mean, when you're eating fresh, you almost don't even have to do anything. You know, like if you're cutting right. up a it's, tomato, it's true. you can just eat it on, you know, you could just get a yeah. thing of pasta and put that tomato on it. And it's perfect the way it is, right. a little salt and pepper. But, yeah, it's true. You know, to to fix it up a little bit and, you know, try a souffle with some roasted peppers that you get. The peppers at the farmer's market, like that, just the kaleidoscope of different flavors and hotness and oh my gosh it's just like i, I mean you're making my mouth water <laughs> i don't know about everybody it's out fun. there it's fun it's so fun <laughs> <laughs> so listen you are welcome to call in 919-518-9773 or connect with us on skype at computers 2k voice you can join us in our chat and ask questions comment you know, whatever you like, if you've tried something, if you've eaten something crazy, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, we want to hear about it. So we have some slides that we want to show also um, that uh, Elizabeth has, you know, been experiencing with her um, her kids and in general. So why don't let's let's do this yeah. first one. So the first one is one of my students. This is the one who's been gluten free and um, just one of the things that kids and families find is gluten free bread is really hard to 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 get right. And so this is the owner of Fresh Levant Bakery um, in North Raleigh, and she has a whole restaurant that is gluten-free. And so Sarah, I just wanted to take Sarah there because she could eat anything she wanted from the menu. And she just looked at the menu and she was so excited because she just, you know, it just opens your whole world. It's just, and so the owner came and spoke to us and she told us how like she came upon opening this bakery and making pita bread that's so beautiful and tender and, you know, told Sarah about what it went, what she went through to kind of get to that recipe. And then um, took Sarah through a um, tour of the kitchen and we ate everything from, you know, appetizer through dessert. (laughs) And it was just wonderful. And that's the thing, again, like connecting to the local people around you that have experienced different things to open your mind. Do you find people are friendly? Oh, so friendly. They Anyone who likes food, I swear, like they just want to talk about it and share. And I mean, that's the, the enjoyment of cooking is most of it is like giving it to someone and having them love it and just having them experience that. I mean, it's the uh-huh. big part of why I think people do it. You know, I actually love that restaurant as well. Yeah. We haven't chatted about that, but that is my favorite restaurant so to good. go to. Yes, because I am gluten free and then my daughter is vegan. Mm-hmm. Uh, not vegan, but she's dairy free now mm-hmm. and also gluten free. But anyway, it's delicious. It is really And good. it is amazing what you can do Mm -hmm. when you do it it is just putting your mind to it it is it's delicious and they they they're baking i mean for cakes that are Mm -hmm. dairy free gluten free you would think you're eating like a just the best chocolate hazelnut cake you can ever (laughs) eat the one you that i would want to eat all day exactly which is part of the whole thing is like not missing out you know like when you have a food allergy like for so long you missed out on all those flavors and textures and now finally with people are passionate it's so they're learning how to make it so you're not it's missing true. out on that and and I'll tell you what I and please don't think badly of me but for my birthday I don't think I told any too many people this <laughs> so you're hearing this but for my birthday back in February one of the things I wanted to do was take my coffee from home which I love and go sit outside of Fresh Levant and eat a pastry. Oh, that uh, sounds I mean, perfect. I did that. I went inside cuz I don't eat those things yeah. normally and I went in 
It was the biggest treat. I took it to my car and woofed it <laughs> down <laughs> because it was so good. So and good. I don't get to I eat know. it. And it was delicious. Yeah. I mean, what were you going to say? That's then? weird. I mean, I in the last year or so, I started enjoying making bread. Oh, yeah. So, and I want to get something that's more healthy. So mm -hmm. you start playing with the whole wheat yeah. and the multigrain, and they don't rise. Uh, and reading uh, what I've been doing lately is adding wheat gluten uh -huh. to it. And boy, it comes up. So I guess I'm, I'm going the other way around. You know, instead of gluten free, right. you add gluten to mm -hmm. it to make it. Uh, but rise. there's got to be something they're using that makes it, it rise. Yeah, in the not in the gluten free. There is they rise. like I can't remember what it is because I haven't made the bread they, yet. They, they, I mean, I was gum. reading and there were things to put uh, the water that you wash the potatoes with. Yeah, yep. You know, oh, is mm -hmm. that true? I think so. Yeah. I mean, which is like, I, I tried. What do you right. mean <laughs> washing? Like you or you boil the potatoes yeah. and then you well, use yeah. potato you, water and, afterwards, and that for, helps make the bread rise. I don't know. That, but, supposedly, yeah. Oh. Uh, there was the gluten. There was. Uh, use more yeast, mm -hmm. but when I I tried that and it was a big disaster. <laughs> and why are you making bread? Because I like because it's fun. Oh, yeah, okay. you like you like eating. I mean, I love. Bread. I know. I, I don't. I I don't eat it much. I eat one slice a day. Oh my god! I would never be able to control myself. No, no. You <laughs> well. well you okay, I do have to tell you my favorite bakery. If you haven't been, is Bolted Bread in downtown it's Raleigh. It's not gluten free. No, but it's local yeah. wheat. So it's okay. and they grind it in house. So a lot of people who have gluten allergies can eat it because yeah. it's yeah. So yeah. Well. yeah. So, because so, I would not hot bread would and me in the same room could not last. Mm -hmm. I would. I know. Well, that's I what my, my grandmother used to make I homemade bread I in that oven. That you can't much. eat I mean, them. It, it turns into sugar right oh away. Oh my god! But I love bread, bread and butter. <laughs> Uh -huh. Bread and butter. I mean, that's what that's what made me start cooking as a kid. My grandmother making homemade bread in that wood burning oven, and as kids, we cut it and then we take a little tool and and just toast the edges over the mm -hmm. wood fire and then melt the bread the butter oh. over it. And then we'd go, we take the little, we go sit behind the wood stove and eat it, you know, where it was warm. And it was like oh, the yeah. best experience growing up. I mean, oh, it was yeah. just, that's just what kicked my cooking thing. You know? Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. Because my grandmother used to make challah, which mm -hmm. is a Jewish yeah. braided bread. And I can remember, you know, being at her house, you know, before the weekend would start. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you just want to eat it. Yeah. I mean, and you do have those smelly, yeah. beautiful yes. memories. Of your grandparents. Yeah, and I think that's what our generation, you know, has lost a lot of that cooking part. I think it's coming back. But, I, you know, me growing up, I always wanted to cook, and I had this little holly hobby oven, uh -uh. and I would run out of the little boxes, and I'd be like, oh, I still want to cook, and I'd have to wait till Christmas to get another one. And so, like, I want I think this is part of what I want to, like, I'm doing what I, for kids, what I wanted as a That's as interesting a, you know? that. <laughs> so you're saying you, that your generation— and I think I, you're younger than I am, so. But your generation did not is not cooking. Um, I think they are more, but I think you know we have so many restaurants <laughs> and we're so busy yeah. and um and I just kind of I really want kids to have that control. Like I want them to be able to you know do it for themselves if they want to do it. Like mm -hmm. especially if they have allergies and they don't want to eat the same thing every day, they want to try something new and and mm -hmm. and also just open their minds to new things and new recipes. Like we did Korean pancakes one day with all these fresh vegetables and we made a sauce on the side. And um, the, the, in fact, I wrote down a couple of things, just the, um, we did the gluten-free pasta and we did a corn carbonara. So there was no dairy and it. it was corn, fresh corn that we creamed and we made into a sauce. How long did it take you to do that? Um, I mean, it took a day to probably do all the cooking. A um, day? I mean, not a whole day, but like, four hours or something. And we did like the dessert the day, like some of the stuff prep the day before. So that's a whole learning experience too. Like if you're going to have a dinner party, like coming up with a menu, figuring out what has to be made first. And for kids, it's really fun. Like, I mean, we actually printed out the menu and had them on the table and, um, you know, just we're presented gonna, with candles. So and write me and we're all going <laughs> to get invited to Elizabeth's yes. and she's going to cook for everybody. I will because do that. I know a whole day. But you don't have to do no. that to that degree. No. But you can experiment and enjoy, and and it's and it's it's a it's like opening up a gift. 
you know, when you're doing it and, and how it tastes. And, and don't be intimidated out. by making mistakes. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you watch those cooking yeah. shows and everybody makes mistakes. It's just part like something, the oven's on too hot or mm -hmm. you forget about something and you have to, sometimes you have to do it over. Like we made these, we experimented with one of my classes making fortune cookies from scratch where we, <laughs> the kids all wrote the fortunes and wow. we made the batter and they just didn't work out. So in my little cookbook that I brought with me, we I titled it Misfortune Cookies instead. <laughs> <laughs> so they tasted really good, but they just didn't work. So this is a very, so I don't know if everybody can see this. So, so you created a cookbook. It's a little cookbook um, with Raleigh kids that I worked with the first summer. This was the first workshops that I did. And they all signed the back of it. So it's kind of fun. Um, the back of the cookbook has um, a local source guide for all the different farmers that we used and also farmers markets. And the cookbook is a mixture of, it's got my grandmother's donuts recipe in it. Um, it has photographs that the kids took. And it also has family recipes from some of my students, like my a Lebanese rooted chickpea salad. Um, and and then this on is your actually, website. It, um, it will be tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think it is, Tell but it's like not. Website the, is. Yeah, it's www.elizabethgalecki.com. So it would, uh, so, okay. Yeah. It, I mean, Elizabeth does, you know, portraits and family uh, pictures and chill. That's how I found Elizabeth to begin with. Many years ago, I went into a coffee shop locally and I was in awe of the shots that I saw on the wall of children. I thought, oh my God, who is this woman? So as it turns out, it was Elizabeth. <laughs> But anyway, you have to see her website and see what she does. Yeah. So what's the next shot? Um, so this is a, one of my students' photographs of tomatoes at the farmer's market and just how gorgeous. I mean, look at the, the co I love like the composition with, and just like the color of that blue against all those really beautiful oranges and I mean, reds. that's beautiful. Isn't that it? Could just be peace a, art. That could be a paint, a, a shot that somebody would buy. Yeah, and that's the thing. So that's the other thing is we actually did an exhibition of the kids' photographs um, a couple summers ago. And we I printed out, you know, one or two of each of their photographs. And then we did a little exhibition at a children's bookstore in downtown Raleigh. And we sold the um, cookbooks there as well. So really getting them to see, like, the business side and letting them create. And in our workshops, we... Um, I help them learn to do the editing, like they edit on software and then they put it on the blog. And then I have a, um, one of my students, this Sarah again, who she's just amazing. And she did a cookbook on tomatoes. I mean, I'm sorry, a calendar for all her family. So we designed this calendar because tomatoes are her favorite. So we um, each page was a different tomato photograph and a recipe. And she gave them out to her friends and family for so, um, the holiday. You know, there's a lot of, um, people that look for things to do with their kids during the summer. Exactly. And this is kind of where it started. This is a great, um, mo you know, parent. I was going to say yeah. mommy, but it may not be the mommy. It could be the time. a nanny. Yeah, it could be a friend or a daddy, an aunt. grandma, whoever, yeah. sister, brother. But this is a great, um, you know, something to do with your, with kids during the summer. If you, you know, you have some at home and you want something to do. This is a really good a great project. Yeah. I have a, um, somebody who wants to um, have her son come in and do a workshop with me and then he would cook their anniversary dinner. And how sweet would that be? I just think that's such a great idea. I think, yeah. you know, having families kind of, you know, work together yeah. and come up with ideas of how but to. I just, th I, but we're so busy. I know. I, I think that's, you know, we're talking a lot about, you know, all of these things. And I just think that it was so, so busy that this is just, you know, one meal a week. Right. You know, that people, Or even a month. Like, yeah. you know, start, you don't have to start huge, but just, yeah. like, just... Just something... Slow down right, and that appreciate. Interrupts, and, that interrupts the normal day-to-day, -day, everyday kind of thing that just, you know, kind of puts a halt... Yes. ...to it, what we're doing. And really, like, starting with going to somewhere other than just the regular grocery store. It is such a different experience. I mean, Chapel Hill, Carborough, all, you know, in, in any city, there's going to be one farmer's market and then there's going to be 20 or, you know, maybe right. not 20. Especially but, these days. Yeah, like right. other small ones and really jumping to different ones and meeting and talking to the farmers because, I mean, there's one, there's a um, farmer's market in Durham that I went to that this woman had like 10 different kinds of mushrooms. And I had never seen them. And I was like, well, what are the differences? And she told me about them. And like, you know, this one tastes this way. This one 
is, an, you know, tastes like something like an oyster, you know, the oyster mushroom. And then, and they have different textures. So you use them for different things, but it's just, you know, and they're gorgeous. I mean, it's just. And, and, I, and I do believe, and I have that the vegetables and fruit bought at a farmer's market last long. It does. Cause it doesn't travel as long. It doesn't, it doesn't sit no. so long. And the other, and you get fuller more quickly. It takes less food when you're eating that way. I mean, it takes less of a tomato. I mean, you know what I mean? Cause the, the, the flavor is so rich. Right. You don't need as much. Right. No, I think, and I do think it is like, it definitely tastes way different. I mean, way different. Mm -hmm. Way different. So there is something, I mean, there is something to, you know, to say, but it's, again, it's about that slowing down, yeah. that, you know, being with family, being with friends, doing it for yourself, whatever that looks like. It, it It's so important because we are going so, 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 so fast. And it is really important, you know, and it's not a bad thing that we're, that there's so many things to enjoy out here that, you know, it's, it's a cause for us to want to gobble things up mm -hmm. and be involved here mm -hmm. and be involved here. And you can stay connected this way. You can stay connected that way. You can, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing, it, but there's still time for something like this as well. Yeah. And I think and you just have to idea. make the time. You just have to make yeah. the time. And that's, it's a priority. It's just something that you choose to do and you just, you know, think of it as, something fun and creative yeah. and you know an art i mean it's an art from this like food is art like from the start oh, to the <laughs> so when you and when you're talking about art mm -hmm. talk to people out there who know art but who don't understand art oh that's a hard one <laughs> i mean i think it's because we, we take art for not right. for granted but we take art that is well it's art but what does that mean i think it's seeing something differently and noticing it and I think people take it too seriously. I think that's what, it's just like cooking. You know, people don't do it because they're intimidated by it as art the same way. Like, just pay attention and what does it mean to you? And you can express that in whichever way you want. And I think that's art. Art is expressing something that's... You know, the other thing that got me when you were talking about this and the kids writing is yes. how descriptive are they becoming very it's through, fun to hear what the they've combination of words and mm -hmm. things that they're figuring out and it's fun to hear how they've experienced it different than how you see them experiencing it like you know they'll write about something and be like oh i totally forgot about that or i didn't even notice that and they they see it mm -hmm. um so that's I, that's why i love like at the end of each workshop day I just let them sit quietly and write and, you know, we, we've edited their pictures and then they write about the day to describe it. And we kind of put links to the recipes. So if people see the pictures and they want to try the recipe, they can find it. And so, and, you know, also like thanking whoever we've found the recipe from, because there's some amazing, amazing cookbooks out there. And mm -hmm. I love to be able to let people so know. So what are you doing there? So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this was taken. One of my longtime students, Ray, did. A, she helped me with a workshop. She is somebody who I mentored when she was nine, and now she's sixteen. And she helped me one day with a workshop, and she took this picture of me. So she's always capturing me and all kinds of like crazy things. <laughs> we were making probably like well some kind of dough. I'm guessing it was like galettes or tarts or something. <laughs> that's crazy. And this is Alice Hinman. So she is a beekeeper in Raleigh and she keeps hives on top of a bunch of rooftops in Raleigh restaurants. And then she has a hive at the Raleigh City Farm. And so we went to visit the Raleigh City Farm, which is one of the places that I take the kids to learn and to pick and to um, purchase vegetables. And we bought some honey or I think that time she gave us some honey but they were able to go up right to the bees and she explained why they're important. I mean, that's the part of like letting kids know, like, you know, so many kids are whole, like all they think of as bees is like, Oh my gosh, they're just going right, to sting right, me, right, right. you know, but they're so important to nature yep. and like why. And so she taught them why and, and showed them how to come right up to a beehive and be able to photograph it from right in front of it, you know, and not get stung and, you know, and, and just teach them that they're. I'd love to have her on the show. She, you would love her. She's well, amazing. I will, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she has hives on top of restaurants? Yep. Mm -hmm. Garland and Raleigh. And, and so who um, gets the honey? She goes there and gets the honey for the restaurants? Well, or the restaurants? it's more about just getting more bees into the environment. Oh, okay. So um, it's not I'm, for the restaurant necessarily. No, uh-uh. Okay, it's just, yeah, it's just a, a, place. a place for the hives. And why to... does she need places? 
Um, um, that's a good question. I think because we're we don't have as many bees anymore, and we need more bees. And so she's trying to to get more bees in the environment. And I, that's but why in town? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Safe so, places, yeah. and I think you know, like on top of a restaurant, people aren't gonna be uh, around right, them all right, the time. Right, right. Um, some places the the bees may go, and some they may not. Some places they right, do right, good, right, sometimes right. they may not. Because it is liquid gold. Yes, and her honey. Oh so she um, has a she does harvest the honey, on I think maybe from her hives and her um, her own personal space. And it's called Girl Honey. And it's really good. So we, um, the first time we got honey from her, we use it as a glaze on our donuts for our class. And we've, I just got some more recently from a fundraiser she did. So I'll be using that this week. I mean, it is, I bought some from a, not somebody here, but somebody like out of Charlotte Mm -hmm. or somewhere who did, does all flavors with honey. Pumpkin. Lavender. Lavender. Mm -hmm. And I bought a bourbon honey. Oh yeah. And put it on top of salmon. Yep. And it was it's so good. delicious. Yeah, and, and the it pro- comes out so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they say that lo- honey that's sourced close to where you live or where you're living is healthier for you because of all the things that the all the different things that the bees are carrying back yeah. to that hive. So, like, if you have allergies, apparently it's supposed it's to be really good, good for you. Local. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, so knew? this is yeah so this little boy is one of my students and so this is kind of like the end product so we you know went and we bought um we made local pot we made pasta with this local i think it was like a kale pesto so we had kale growing in the garden we made kale pesto and then um and then he photographed it and then we printed a photograph for him to take with him so it was kind of like the whole experience um he's adorable it is it, there's more control in picking your food and, yes. and and not succumbing to whatever is around. But That's there true. is more control in making the decision of what you're going to eat and what you're not going to eat and, you know, all of that. There's more control. I mean, we we want control, and this is a great place to be responsible with your control. Yeah, basically. it is. So, you okay. good? We're good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, no more slides, right? No more slides. Now we're the real slide. <laughs> okay, so what's next in this in this project yeah. or on this path for you? Um, that's a good question. So I think I just I want to just keep exploring, working with the kids and and broadening it, like doing the dinner parties, um, maybe doing some more exhibits. You know, letting the kids make products with their you know like books, calendars, you know artistic you know end products with, with what we do um and then i would love to work with adults like i've been saying that for a while and i and think what, what's, why not why aren't you oh i just haven't organized i haven't gotten it together is it, is, is, why is it different <laughs> um i don't know i think because it happens most people are available at night and i think okay. but you know i just haven't had the figured out how to kind of balance that with working every day and i'm working on weekends a lot so it's mm. just it's just the but the work would that. be the workshop itself would be the same. Similar. I don't know how much you know. I don't know if people would be just as much interested in the documentary project of the food and they everything. They probably just want to eat it. They just want to <laughs> eat it. Yeah, drink wine, cook, learn. I to mean, cook. Maybe, but I, that's okay. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, you know, have that experience. Exactly. It's, it, it. I mean, it is fun. Yeah. And then the other yeah. thing, I was just talking to my friend this morning about this is doing these um, travel, you know, like going and doing traveling workshops where it's photography and food related and like helping people learn about that in different cities. Trip, trip click, and cook. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. we, and, and it was funny because, I mean, it could be cook and click. Yes. But it I know, was I click and click cook. first. So trip, you, yeah. click, and cook. <laughs> yeah. That, so like traveling to different parts of the World. Country, world, yeah, whatever. and just you know, mm-hmm. different cultures and different foods, and, and eating and, with different and people, eating and cooking, and and experiencing that in different places. When I uh, used to own a furniture store, and we used to sell yeah. dinettes and outdoor furniture and things like that, I had a slogan that we sold the thing that kept people together. Oh, because around the kitchen table. table, that's where people would come back together yeah. always. And it, it's still a really good line. You can, it is. you know what I mean? It's still yeah. a good line because it, we, 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 these are the opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday when I had my book launch and I had the millennials up, you know, uh, on the panel and an audience and people, you know, I could have really shut up 
and people were just so interested mm-hmm. in what, I mean, everybody, the millennials in the audience, the uh, multi-generations in the audience, just so interested in what people have to say. Yeah. That it, we could have gone on and on and on because we want to come together. Yes. And food is such a, a, a trigger of yeah. joy and happiness. And it's historical, you know, it's, it's like what people have done to come together yes. forever, you yes. know, it's like what yes. connects us. And so, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, like last week we had our guest on who, um, Sarah Chrism, Chism, Chrism, I can't remember her last name, but she lives as though she's back still in the, Victorian oh, wow. era and she cooks that way and mm-hmm. she has recipes in her books that are Victorian cool and you know so she is she makes waffles whatever mm-hmm. it is that she's doing and it is fascinating yeah you know about what turns people on and mm-hmm. what is exciting and you know gives you that that edge that little happy edge yeah. every day yeah you know just and you have to yeah. eat so like why yeah, not make it eat. exciting you know Absolutely. like why I, I just don't understand people that are like I just eat the same thing every day. I don't really care about, you know, like, I just can't, I know that, like, that's mm-hmm. fine for some people, but I just, I, it's just a whole different thing for me. Mm-hmm. It, it, and, and maybe, you know, people do care, but I think that the issue is we, sometimes we just don't give ourselves an opportunity to take really good care of ourselves mm-hmm. and express our caring mm-hmm. and be okay with the fact that we, we can care and it's okay to be, it's like, it's not, doesn't, it's a. It's not special, right? To care, right? It, it's our. It's our right, right? To care, and it's, I do think making it special every day. Like, yeah. why not? Or, I like, mean, even not? if it's not every day, but like as much as you can. Like, absolutely. It's, it's you know, life is short. Like, why not? Right. <laughs> and it feels really good. You know, my husband and I. We don't. We don't normally spend a lot of time cooking, mm-hmm. but we like to eat good food. Yeah. And, and when we come home at night from working, from exercise, and we you know sit down and eat mm-hmm. what, good vegetables and what fruit you know, fish, whatever we're eating. And it is, it's so, it's so happy to sit there after an entire day mm-hmm. and it could be nine o'clock at night Yeah, coming together and eating something and sharing what and you sharing. did. Yeah. Like, I'm like excited. Putting, yeah. 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 When it turns out good. Mm-hmm. I mean, that shocks me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy when the, you know, the cause I, spices turn yeah. out. I'm not using recipes. It feels good when you like feel something really, that people really enjoy. Good. Yeah. It feels really good. So I, I would love to, you know, see, everybody out there kind of experiment a little bit. It could be breakfast. I mean, yeah. breakfast also is a, is an interesting meal mm-hmm. to prepare for and have fun with. Yeah. But now we've got such beautiful fruits and mm-hmm. we have berries and we have all these things that add color mm-hmm. to what we're doing. And mm-hmm. I think also things, little things like even lighting a candle. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, having putting yeah, putting put, your water in a pretty glass. Uh, like yeah. that's the one thing. Like I, yeah. whenever we eat with my students, we you know have nice you know tableware, and they put their you know they get to drink their lemonade that they've made from scratch <laughs> in a wine glass because it's just feels special and it does taste different. It does. I mean, it literally tastes different than it would in just a plastic cup. Yeah. Oh gosh. Right. I mean, and that's part of the whole sensory experience. Like. Drinking out of plastic is completely different than drinking out and of plastic. And how does that happen, though? How does it, how is it different? I mean, it well, is different, but I don't know how it is different. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's, again, the sensory, like mm-hmm. something that's, you know, plastic, it just has a smell and it has, it's right. not, you know. Just enjoy it, otherwise you're going to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really does, it, there's a, when, you know, when you chill something, mm-hmm. it tastes different when it's in a glass than when it's in plastic yeah and there is there is a difference yeah. i don't i don't i can't tell you why well and it's also the same thing as like eating off of a paper plate versus which a, i do you a know. Lot of. well you know it's all right it's fast <laughs> but I'm bad with paper plates because i mean but anyway yeah it does it is different and it is different I remember um one day my i was we were at my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house and spent the night and my we got up the next morning and my brother-in-law made breakfast and we ate in the dining room yep and that I will never yes. forget as being different yep. than eating in the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah. Because so many times you save the dining room only for special you occasions. But to. why? Like it's, you know, like use it. Yeah, Same with yeah. the china. Like I remember, you know, you know, growing up and like, oh, we can't use this. We can only use it because what if it gets broken? But then it sits there for 40 years. Like use the pretty things, you know, like mm-hmm. if it gets broken, yeah. you know. Yeah. When I have parties at home. I am forever 
using my grandmother's things. Mm-hmm. I love my mother's things. Yeah. I love yes. using. Yeah. And I and I and I'm klutzy and I bang things. Yeah. So I'm conscious mm-hmm. of taking it out gently, putting it on the table. Mm-hmm. Wa- I mean, I don't mm-hmm. hand washing. Things. it. Yes. Yeah. I don't put anything in the dishwasher and I am clumsy and I bump things, you know, all the time. But it's such a pleasure to mm-hmm. really to use those things mm-hmm. that, you know, pass down. I know a lot of people don't. You and know. even if you don't have that, just, you know, we create again, that's going back to like, OK, maybe you don't have something fancy, but like going to a thrift shop and finding one plate that you like Absolutely. or a yes. yard sale, an estate sale yeah. or something, yeah. to, you know, or yeah. or that paper plate, you know, decorating it with. <laughs> something alongside, you know, like you can make a celebration you out of it. Can, like you, you just can. have to think about it a and little bit. And things don't have to match. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they do not have to match. You could set a table with different plates, different mm-hmm. bowls, different chairs, different chairs, and the, and it's just yeah. it doesn't have to match. Yeah. So anyway, if you have any questions, come. What she say? Deborah. Oh, Deborah, my granddaughters and I always talk about what, what colors. The rainbow are on the plate. Oh, oh, okay. That's cool. That is cool. That's a good thing to do. Yeah, that's excellent. Deborah, that's fabulous. <laughs> that was a good comment. Okay, so last chance. 919-518-9773 or Computers 2K Voice on Skype where you can join us in our chat and ask questions, make a comment, tell us what you're doing with your food, tell us what you do with your table. You know, how are you enjoying things? How do you kind of make it a little special? at night you earned it you deserve it and whatever it is you know just make it good so um you have so i just wanted to show so so my two newest books right uh listening to the hearts of millennials in just one afternoon listening to hearts of millennials which is up on amazon it's a quick read it's it's a very short book you can read it and it's just it's packed with information about millennials how they feel, how they think, you know, their desires, and you will just love them. And there's so, and I will tell you that they say a lot of the things that we all want to say. They're living by it. And they are just insightful, strong, powerful, clear, and they're fabulous. And the next book that should um, be published within the next um, month and a half or so, but it's, it's getting close. In just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of people impacted by opioid addiction. So that will be coming up soon. And if you know anyone who is currently using and having a struggle and they would be willing to share for the book, I would be honored to have them in the book and share. So please let me know. You can contact me at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. I would be you know, very honored and I, they could be anonymous as well. And I can use my here's real quick from Chris. Yeah. Where can we find out more about Elizabeth's classes? Yeah. So um, my website is probably the best place. Um, I need to get it up there. I've been posting. OK, awesome. I've been posting things on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, so we have an Instagram um, cook and click, click and cook um, for just all the kids pictures. So there's a link to my blog in there with the kids things. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so or the website, and I'm gonna get more information up there today. Would you as well. ever consider doing something online? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, you yeah. can with with things like Zoom today, you can see people. Yeah, and uh, people, we mean you have to do this more often. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you just yeah. have a class. Yeah, you know, yeah. it could be two or three kids in Timbuktu, but yeah, you know, you you can all experience things together. That's true. You know, with it's like a virtual community of kids, right? Yeah. So final words. Well, so one of the things I had, one of the things I learned from one of my students is this really funny phrase. That's what I love about the kids. Like they'll mm-hmm. say stuff and you're like, what does that mean? And it's, it's, they said, it slaps. And I was like, what is that? I've never heard it. It's really good. <laughs> wow. It slaps. So that's so one that's of the things. That's a good hashtag. I know. I love that. It slaps. <laughs> it slaps. That's yeah. a good hashtag. I love that. Yeah, I love I, it too. Yeah, that's cool. I'm yeah. done. What do you think? Any any <laughs> final anything's from you? No. I rem- you know, these kids are really terrific. I said my this little grandson that was over that's over, he's four, and the um my the he came to me one day, he said, Grandma, can I clean? I said, Well, we just cleaned. And he looked at me and said, yeah, but I do walls. Oh, my gosh. And it Can just, you come over to my house? 
<laughs> it was just so precious, Aww, you know. Yeah. But they are there, and they're very smart today. They are. And they, there's nothing you can't teach kids, and or they can teach you. And because <laughs> you're teaching them, they are teaching you. So, like Deborah was talking about her grandchildren, mm-hmm. you know, it. This is, you know, this is for anybody. Yeah. And everybody. And yeah. it's and it's a, a kind of a a community family affair. For sure. So it's but I would love to see you do this online. Okay. I think you would I yeah, think this be could fun. be a really fabulous thing to do. And you know, it doesn't take that much more. Yeah. You know. And you do cookies and things, right? Yes. You sell those yeah. during Christmas. Yes. So just briefly, just for a second, because we're about <laughs> to be done. But uh-huh. share about your cookies. Okay, so this cookie recipe I came up with years ago, and I used to do as gifts for people, and it kind of got crazy um, to the point where I couldn't keep up with giving the gifts because they'd want one or two more dozen for friends. And they're, um, again, it's that's a beautiful local flower, but it's a um, brown butter, rosemary, um, cookie sandwich cookie with rosemary caramel in the center oh and there's almond flour in it as well so it's a just a kind of nutty cookie and with a little savory Christmas, right? yeah i sell them just through facebook so you like just, it's just very just so you just so you're you do these like pockets of things yes and that and that's really fun it is fun it, it keeps it fun. exciting it like keeps I it just, exciting yeah, i love to yeah so it's great so anybody we all can <laughs> like learn from elizabeth Aww. So anyway, I want to thank you for being thank here you. today. You're always fun. a pleasure. <laughs> you are too. Thank <laughs> you. And everybody out there, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks and enjoying. for yeah. yeah. Say it. Being here. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I'm not. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. And everybody on the chat, thank you. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.